All right, let's do a video that goes through this job openings and labor turnover survey. So this is the JOLTS. So you'll see it here, J-O-L-T-S. That's the job openings and labor turnover survey. And here's the overall report uh, that we see. Okay, so what are some of these data? Uh, as we scroll down, you'll notice that this report will give us the job openings. So we're going to think about this as vacancies in our class. We are going to see the number of hires. So that's when someone who is unemployed becomes employed or when a vacancy becomes filled. And then we're also going to see the total number of separations. So we've got quits, which is going to be very important, which we're going to talk about here in a, in a little bit. People who get laid off or discharged, so fired. But then there's other separations uh, like death. But that number's a lot smaller than, you know, the quits or the layoffs and discharges, which we'll see here in a second. At the very bottom of this report, you'll see that you can look at the charts for this news release. And that's what I want to kind of go over a little bit with you so we can see some of the data that's provided in this survey. I am going to mark this up a little bit and then erase it so that when we move on to other graphs. So we have the number of unemployed persons. That's always going to be denoted with this letter capital U. And we have these job openings, which is going to be capital V. That V is going to be a vacancy. So we're going to see that a lot during this lesson. And so this is U over V. So it's the unemployed persons per job opening. So unemployed per job opening. And what you can notice is this is very counter cyclical. So we would call this counter cyclical because it's increasing during a recession and decreasing during an expansion. That would be a counter because it's going against the business cycle. So it's a counter cyclical piece of data or indicator. I'm going to go ahead and erase this and move on to the next graph. The next graph we see here is the number of job openings, hires, and certain separations. So the great thing about these interactive graphs here right on the BLS website is I could get rid of a few things and look at just the total non-farm job openings. So this is just those vacancies, right? This is just vacancies. And as you can see, right, so if these are the, the total non-FAR job openings, it's cut off there, but it's opening. So these are our vacancies. This is going to be uh, pro-cyclical because openings go up in expansions, decrease in recessions, up in expansions, decrease in recessions. We can go ahead and look as well at the hires. Same exact thing. If I add the hires in, decrease during a recession increase during an expansion. And if I look at total separations over here, uh, let's get rid of the other two so we can really see what it looks like. Uh, it's a little faint, but you can see it's very, oh, there you go. You can see that it's very slightly as well uh, pro-cyclical where we're seeing a decrease during a recession and then a slight increase, but probably that's just because of the overall total population. All right, let's see what other graphs we can look at for some interesting stuff for this semester. Um, the next one is just the uh, rates. So what is the rate of job openings? What are the rate of hires? What is the rate of separations? So you can see uh, continues to see that uh, pro-cyclical kind of a approach even with the rates. Here, what we're able to look at is we're able to split out the hires as one, which we, which we just saw, but we can look at the total separations and what I want to do is I want to say, uh, I want to talk about why this part right here, right? So this is my recession. We actually see the total separations. You would expect this to go way up during a recession, right? Because people are getting fired during a recession. But hold on. What if I go ahead and I add in the quits versus the layoffs. This is the very important part about the data if we look right here during the recession. Notice that the quits, right? So the quits are in this kind of darker color is declining, right? It's going down during a recession. 
So quits go down during a recession. So when we're looking at the overall quit rate, that's going to be pro-cyclical, meaning that it's going to go down during a recession and up during an expansion because during an expansion, people feel comfortable quitting, whereas during a recession, they don't want to. Whereas layoffs, which is more in this green color, right? Layoffs is going to be counter-cyclical. All right, counter-cyclical meaning it's going against the business cycle. So it's going up in the overall recessions and down during expansions. And that's a really interesting thing to think about why it's important to look at the quit rate. Let's see what else is on this report. The next chart, you can look at this with different sectors. So if I wanted to you know, only look at education or arts and entertainment, I can see how that has changed with opening rates, how many job openings are in different sectors. We can also look at the separation rates, the hiring rates by uh, U.S. region. So if I wanted to look at Northeast instead of South, I can quickly just do that. So there's lots of cool stuff here on this BLS website. And the last one we are going to look at is the beverage curve. So let me go ahead and mark this one up because this is going to be the thing that we really do here in this uh, lesson. So we have this beverage curve, which we're going to get to about three quarters of the way through this week's readings. And it is the job openings rate, right, which is V for vacancies um, over unemployed. And this right here is going to be represented by theta, which is a level of market tightness. And you're going to read about this uh, soon, depending on how quickly you're going through the material. So market tightness is going to be on the y-axis and then the unemployment rate, which you already know, being the total number of unemployed over the labor force is going to be on our x-axis. And let's see how this has changed over time. You can notice here that it looks like we have two distinct downward sloping beverage curves. And then during the pandemic, we've seen it shift way out to the right. So we're going to talk about, you know, what might cause this to shift, why it makes sense that we've seen a huge shift to the right during the pandemic. And can we expect this to kind of start to work its way back to a more normal beverage curve? And we'll, you know, we'll discuss why it's downward sloping. We'll see how all these things are related. And so I think that this week's lesson is super interesting and it'll really help you understand a more realistic and common day labor market.